Hello, this is Mikey Borup with another After Effects tutorial, and I'm going to be talking about 3D text. Now, if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, click on the subscribe button, or if you're not on YouTube, click over to youtube.com slash user slash long live Mikey. Now, if you are on YouTube, make sure you check out the website editingwiz.com. It's a great resource for news and polls and tutorials and all sorts of things like that. So, three things I'm going to teach you about 3D text. I'm going to show you a, a simple, fake way of doing 3D text, a more advanced way of doing 3D text, and 3D text with a plugin. And you can click on these right now to take you straight to those if you want to skip the one and just go to the other. Or you can watch the whole video. And then at the end, I'm going to show you what I think of the new 3D text in After Effects CS6 and what that can do. So first off, I want to show you a simple kind of a, a cheat on how to create a 3D text look. This is not going to be actual 3D. You won't be able to rotate this around and move it in 3D space. But it gives you that 3D text effect and that 3D text look. So in order to do this, I'm going to first take my text tool, my type tool. I'm going to type 3D text. And let's make that nice and big so we can see. Now what I want to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to pre-compose it. So I'm on a Mac, so Command Shift C, we'll put it in a new composition. And that way I can go in and change the text very easily without having to change it multiple times and you'll see that in a second. So the next step is I'm going to take this comp and I'm going to duplicate it several times. So now I have six different compositions. I just duplicated it, so there are six of them. And on a Mac, that's Command D. So what I want to do is I want to make this look like it's 3D. How I'm going to do this is by adjusting the scale, the horizontal scale, on these other ones and leaving this top one normal. And you'll kind of see in a second. So first I want to do is, to make it easier to see, I'm going to put in a background that's not white and not black. So I'm going to layer new solid and let's create a new color background. I like blue. Okay, and I'm going to drag this to the bottom. So now we have 3D text. So first off, I'm going to take this top comp and I'm going to add a filter just to that. And what I want to add to that is effect color correction tint. And I'm going to come in here to the white. I'm going to bring this down. Uh, let's, let's go about 50% gray. And then the next step is I'm going to take all these compositions below it. I'm going to click S on this keyboard. It'll bring up the scale. And I'm going to unlock them all. And then after I unlock them, I'm going to take this first value, which is the horizontal scale. Vertical scale is the second, horizontal is the first. I'm going to click on that one, and I'm going to type 99. The second one, 98. Third one, 97. 96. 95. And you can see it makes the text look like it's 3D. And that's all I did. And that's really all you have to do for this look is to do that. You can play around with some colors. Um, you can change these different colors with the tint. I can take this and it creates that color without having to go into the text settings inside that composition. So like I said, if you want to change the text, you double click on this comp and you can change text. And it will change it out throughout there. Let me show you the second way in which you can create a 3D look. Okay, this is going to be very similar, so let's grab the text tool and type 3D text. Make that nice and big. And again, I'm going to do the same thing, put this in its own composition, so command shift C and take this and duplicate it. So I've got six layers there. Next what I want to do is to turn these all into 3D. 
and right here there's a 3D box and I'm going to just highlight all the layers click the box and they're all 3D and then I'm going to open up the position if I hit P on the keyboard it'll open up just the position I want to deselect them so they're not all selected and then go in and change the Z space on these now that it's 3D it has three coordinates so X Y Z and keep that at zero next one I'm going to move to 5 10 15 20 and 25 now it doesn't look much different now but if I bring a new camera let's add a light so you can even see it better and I'm going to just parent that light to the camera so it always stays right there so you can see there is some depth the only problem is let's actually turn off that light the only problem is is when you get to the side you can start seeing it's just multiple layers now you can have more layers and have them closer together this these are five pixels apart you can have them all one pixel apart and have you know hundred layers and create a nice 3d but then it's going to take forever to render this stuff and it's going to be really really slow so that's kind of the downside but this is more of a 3d look and you can do some 3d movements with it and as long as you're not moving too far it's not noticeable so that is way number two to create a 3d text so the third way to create 3D text is with a plugin called the Shatter plugin. So first, I'm going to start it the same way as I always do. Create some text. And I want to pre-compose that. And then I'm going to do one other thing and I'm going to bring in a new solid. We can make that blue. Blue is cool. So now on this new solid I'm going to add a filter called the shatter filter. If I go to effect, simulation, shatter. And what this does is it creates a shatter and by default it shows kind of a brick texture and it explodes right really cool for cheesy effects but there's something interesting about it is when it explodes you can see this is just a wireframe but there is some depth to it these little bricks are 3d and we can use that to create a 3d text and how you do it is first off let's go to the rendered so you can see what it actually looks like and not just the wireframe second is I don't want this explosion to happen and where that takes place is in the force. So under force one, it's set to f strength of five. Let's do that to zero. Under force two, it's set at a strength of five as well, but there's no radius. But I like to turn that to zero just in case as well. And then the last place, see if I play it now, then all the bricks just fall meaning there's some gravity to it so let's go into so let's go into the physics and in physics sure enough it says gravity gravity of three let's turn that to zero now if I play none of the bricks will fall but they're still there but I don't want them to be bricks I want them to be my text and that's easy enough if I go into this shape tab I'm gonna close these other ones because I don't need them anymore and it says pattern bricks. I click in here and there's a custom. So I click on custom and it says custom shatter map none. I'm going to set that to my 3D text comp. And then I'm going to turn my 3D text comp off in the timeline. And so right now we have a blue 3D text. I can go in and exchange the extrusion depth. Let's turn that background off right here and you can change that and it creates 3D now I want to do a camera so there's two ways of doing that 
and here I can rotate my camera position but if I have a camera in my composition let's go back to that camera system I can have it set to the comp camera and then what I can do is when I rotate my camera in my composition that text will move with it and this is kind of half 3D it's not real 3D if I throw in if I have it move it's not going to have a motion blur if I have a depth of field on the camera that won't affect it okay so like I was gonna say I wanted to talk to you about CS6 in with the ray trace engine and the 3D now this is really cool when they announced this everyone was pretty stoked that After Effects was finally going to do 3D so I when I as soon as I got it I jumped right into it and that was the first thing I tried I wanted to try the 3D so this is how you set that up let's create some 3D text let's do the same thing but on this I'm not going to pre-compose it now right now it's in normal 3D. Right now it's not the ray trace engine isn't turned on. In order to turn that on I need to turn this layer 3D and then up here in the corner it says renderer classic 3D. I'm going to click on that and turn this to ray traced. Okay. Now from here I can extrude this into actual 3D that works with the motion blur, that works with the 3D camera and it works with the depth of field. The only problem is it's incredibly slow unless you have a CUDA enabled graphics card. And really, I just have a terrible time trying to do anything with it. But let me show you how it works really quick. So I open up the text and now I have two more things. I got material options and geometry options. If I click in here, I have extrude depth. And I can just extrude this 3D text and look how long it's taking to render. What a pain. Layer new camera. It's just very basic stuff. It shouldn't take that long, but it takes forever because they've only enabled the GPU um, processing and acceleration if you have a CUDA card. And it's taking forever. Now, if I wanted to add any material options to this, make it transparent, give it some specular, some some shininess or anything like that, then the rendering is just going to take forever and ever. Yes, it does end up looking really nice, but it's going to take you three days to render this thing. So, what do I think of After Effects' new 3D ray traced engine? I think it sucks. Honestly, they should have made it available to all graphics cards and not just the CUDA enabled ones. So, that's my tutorial on 3D text. If you haven't done so, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I love your comments. I want to see what you're working on. If you've got a video that you want to show, please post it as a video response, and then everyone can take a look at it as well. Thank you very much. Have a great day.